Hi everyone, Paul Angelo here. Welcome to another amazing video about the future, about the year 2021, what it means for all of you, what it means for us as gay men, and how to align yourself to thrive in 2021 with friendships, with relationships, and in general. We will talk about the future, and also we will talk about ideas that will take you into the future in an empowered way. We're going to talk about a way to think about yourself, a way to think about your future and align yourself so that you do succeed, so that you do not fail. Because right now we have to be a lot more strategic about the future. Right now there are too many things that are happening with the world that are very complex. So playing games in our lives is no longer something that we can afford. We don't have the luxury to be spontaneous. We have to be aligned. We have to be more strategic about your choices. There is no more room for a lot of risk. I wanted to start with a story about Christmas. I wanted to share with you something that happened in my life, in my family when I was younger, that will help you understand why the videos I share with you come in a certain theme that shows up in most of my videos. And that has to do with what has happened in my past with my family back in Poland. And my family has always been a strong kind of Polish family. There were a lot of conflicts in my family that were right in the open. We would witness them and we never really made a big deal about them. But I noticed at a certain age that throughout the year when my mom would fight with my father and then towards the end of the year for holidays they would stop the fights and pretend that everything was okay they would tell each other I love you but I started noticing that there was something off with that and as a young boy I was very sensitive to notice what is real and what's not real and to me it was very conflicting to notice that my mom and my father would be fighting throughout the year and then couple weeks before Christmas, everybody would pretend everything's back to normal and everybody loves each other. And I remember that. And to me, that's how I started to discover that there were things in life that were phony, that they were phony. And that if we want to be happy, if we want our lives to work, we have to notice what's phony and what's real. And so ever since then, I was very, I was very aware and I was very uh, sensitive to the behaviors of people that when they say I love you do they really mean it or is it just some kind of you know cute language pattern that comes when you are in a relationship or living with someone so does the language that we use does it mean anything do our behaviors that are in a social context do they mean something or are they empty are they phony and so ever since then, I was very sensitive to all the phoniness in the world. I was very, I was conditioned to spot all the phoniness. I've taken critical thinking courses and I'm very well educated. And so that even empowered me even more to be able to discern whether this is the truth 
versus this is phony. Do you love me or do you pretend that you love me? And so I think this is the reason why I became a relationship coach because I am very uh, astute in discerning phoniness from reality or from, from the real. And for men, for all of us, we bring to the table a lot of phoniness a lot of times. And so in my Christmas story from the past, I've, I've had a, a, an extraordinary lesson to be able to tell, is this phony or not? And I took that lesson and I ever since then empowered myself to only position myself to be in places that are real, to never be in phony situations because they're not productive, they're not going to help you, they only take you down. They give you an illusion of something happening that has no real, uh, no real meaning in reality. And so I wanted to discuss this with you because as we look into 2021, what you will gradually begin to notice is that there is this aspect of phoniness that has been institutionalized in the world, not just in the gay world, but especially in the gay world, but also everywhere else. If we had society that worked, if we had society, if we had a gay world that worked, if everybody had wonderful relationships, if everybody went on dates and eventually these dates would result in great connections and a relationship and a cycle of healthy relationships and healthy life, if that was the case, then we we could not we would not have to have this discussion. Everything would be great and we don't have to be critical of our environment. But the reality is that that is not the case. We have bad relationships. People have great difficulty in connecting and dating and having loving relationships. Very few people actually fall in love. Very few, a very small fraction of gay men ever taste love. Uh, most of gay men are confused. Many are addicted to drugs, to sex, to behaviors that go against relatedness. And so if we know that that's what's going on, then we have to ask the question, where is this coming from? Where is it coming from? It's coming from somewhere. It's coming from somewhere. All of the distractions that are in our culture, all of the addictions, all of the, all of the frustrations that you have with relationships and dating, this didn't just happen overnight. It happened across many, many years. It happened across, in fact, uh, plenty of time where solutions could, solutions could have been introduced, but they were not introduced. So I'm sharing this with you because I'd like for you to become more sensitive to the fact that there may be an extraordinary level of institutional phoniness in the gay world where you live in an illusion that what they are telling you you should be doing is the right thing to do. That what they're telling you is what you should pay attention to is what you should in fact pay attention to. So if your world is working, then we don't need to be critical. We don't need to have this discussion. But if your world, your relationship world is not working, and if, if you feel hopeless about the future, about your relationships, it's probably because there's some kind of phoniness that's going on. And you either don't know that it's going on or you surrender to it and you take part in it. So I, I'm sharing this with you because there are solutions, there are answers. And 2021 will be a big year for all of us because that phoniness is going to be in your face more and more and more. And I suspect you already are seeing it. You're noticing there's something very odd about what's happening in the world. And there's something very odd about what's communicated to you by the leaders of all organizations, not just in America, not just in healthcare, but also in the LGBT world. That there's something that unifies all of those institutions. There's this certain phoniness that is all around us that is making it difficult for us to see what is truth, what is falsehood, what is right, what is wrong. And because of it, we feel uncertain about our abilities, about your abilities, you feel uncertain about what the future will bring. And all around, we, we begin to disintegrate and become disempowered. 
Now this process happens slowly, this process takes many years, but this process is now visible. We are seeing how now there are so many conflicting patterns, there are so many conflicting messages, there are so many unusual things that are happening that something is really off here. Something is really off. This phoniness is something that you can break through. You can almost like pierce this bubble of phoniness and understand what's happening. Because when you really let go of a lot of the conditioning that's given to you, you can look around and you can quickly see what's really going on. And obviously that is for everyone to see for themselves. And every time, once you notice this, you never go back to the old way, the naive you from the past, the sheeple version of you. Once you, once you awaken, once you break through the phoniness in the world, that's when you can really open up and understand what you have to do next. You want to understand the law of identity in philosophy. Go online and look, what is the law of identity in philosophy? And you will quickly notice that most of the messages coming from the world, they violate the foundational law of, you can say, metaphysics, which is the law of identity. So basically what we are bombarded with are messages that are so phony, that are so um, against metaphysical laws of reality, that... Um, it, it almost becomes a shock that once you notice this. But you have to first understand what those laws of identity, what that law of identity means, why philosophy is really the key to understand this phoniness in the world, and why you should spend some time looking into this. Because your cognitive machinery, the way that you think, foundationally relies on the law of uh, the mind, the way that the mind works, and the mind works in logical way. At the root of your thinking are certain fundamentals that should never be questioned, that are not up for questioning. They're called the axioms. And in metaphysical study, one of those axioms is the law of identity, also the law of consciousness and the law of existence. These things are the foundations for thousands of years of human enlightenment and human progress. If you take those laws away from your thinking, you disintegrate. And so to discover how the phoniness is um, projected into your world, unfortunately, you will have to acquire some discernment tools. And that's why I refer people to the foundational laws of that come from philosophy, from metaphysics, law of identity, and this is really important for gay people, things are what they are, the concept of isness, and those of you who've done landmark training or who have studied AST training or some of the work of Werner Erhard or even uh, some of the work before that in the 60s, there was this big deal about this law of identity that was talked about as the concept of isness, that in the world, if, as you live through your world, you don't want to play games with the world. You don't want to play what's called rackets. And that's in Landmark Forum, they call it rackets. So if you play a racket in your life, it means that you pretend that something isn't what it is. So for example, if you don't love someone, but you tell yourself you love someone, that's a game. You play a racket. If you hate your job, but you pretend you loved your job, that's a racket. You play games. And so in the world around us, we not only are exposed to our own games, we are exposed to the games that other people play with themselves, how the world is set up as a game. And so being sensitive to that, empowering yourself with understanding of the law of identity helps you break through the phoniness that's all around you. And you become empowered and you become aligned to point your attention to really what is important, what is productive, and what will make a difference for you and for everybody around you. Because ultimately, what's going to win all of this, who's going to win the battle of, of breaking through all the chaos in the world, are people that are going to return to logic, people that are going to return to reason and logical, rational thinking. And returning to some of these fundamental laws of uh, philosophy, law of identity, law of consciousness, 
law of existence. These are the foundational aspects of understanding who we are and what is the next step to rebuild society, to rebuild this crazy world. Because somebody will have to rebuild this. This world is now in chaos. And the, this chaos is going to continue. Society is disintegrating. But at a certain moment, there, there will be a rebuilding process. We will need to rebuild the society. Somehow the society will have to come together again. I believe it's going to happen with the development of smaller communities, kind of like the Big A Family Social Program. That's why I'm dedicating my life to it. I think that's the future. Smaller communities that do observe these fundamental laws of life, of metaphysics, of philosophy. These communities that are productive, that are efficient, that invite men, that are rational, not that have mental illness, or are coming from a world of phoniness, wanting to remain phony. So this concept of phoniness is a good way to empower yourself, good way to think about how to succeed in the world. You want to break through the phoniness, through the, membra the membrane of manipulation, the membrane of conditioning that violates fundamental fundamentals of life. The, everybody thinks that they have the answer. Everybody tries to tell you the answer. But if you don't understand the, how to think about those answers, you won't be able to actually trust that, okay, this guy is for real, or this girl is for real, or this person is for real. So you have to empower yourself with this discernment ability to know what is true, what is false, what is a phony idea, what is uh, an evil manipulation. And that's when you open up your eyes and you look at the world and you realize that people that are psychopathic are running the world. They know they are violating all these laws. They know they are damaging society, but they go ahead and do things and, and uh, uh, in politics and lead the world with their corrupted ideas anyway. So you will see that and then you will realize that holy cow, the future is a continuation of that disintegration of the political environment, disintegration of all institutional environment. All these phony institutions are now gradually trying to fight with one another for power and because they are being exposed, they are now in a very strange position where they try to fight for power, try to hold on for power, yet, and they do it by censoring others. Yet what's really happening underneath all of that is that people are awakening. People are awakening. And through that awakening and also the, the resistance to that awakening, this is going to be a volatile several years. I don't know how many years this is going to be. I don't know exactly how many years and how volatile it's going to be. But you can expect that society will dis disintegrate further and further at, while at the same time there's this awakening happening uh, that's, that's behind that disintegration. You'll have to think about yourself differently. You'll have to uh, be with people that are going to help you understand what's going on, that are going to help you connect with others in a rational and logical way. And this is how you want to think about your future, that you will have to take your future in your own hands, that nobody's going to be rescuing anybody. The world is entering into a very strange place where if you want to survive and thrive in this world, you'll have to be part of a productive process not part of the reactive process, but part of the proactive, the, the solution orientation. Because otherwise, you will become victim to the circumstances of all that pressure imposing on you from every angle. And you're going to have to sustain that pressure by yourself. And I don't think anybody can sustain that for a long time. And we need each other to basically survive that to find some kind of home in all of that and then find solutions to all the difficulties and all the challenges. Everything is important right now. It's important that you pay attention to what's happening in the world. It's important that you pay attention to what is phony and what is real. It's important that you reorient yourself to be with people that are solution oriented, not that are victim oriented. And it's important that you 
that you are okay with the awakening that will probably have to happen also in your life. That many things that you assume are, are real, these are not real. That the people that you've trusted, that these are people that are corrupted. That the ideas that you trusted are also ideas that have been corrupted. What you will find out is that most, I would say 90 to 95% of all the people, of all the institutions, and all the ideas that you trusted, they will turn up to be phony. They will turn up to be completely crazy. And this year, in 2021, all of this will come into the open. And so I wanted to share this with you, this video with you. I am optimistic in the long run. I'm very optimistic because all of this is necessary. The division in society has to be dissolved. And the only way that a division in society can be dissolved is by uh, an element of common struggle that then washes away the erroneous assumptions about each group. In other words, eventually there is this return to truth. And the, what washes away the irrationality is the struggle. And then eventually people realize that we all struggle together. And then the, the commonality in the struggle is what eventually brings people together. And then from there, people grow and create healthy communities. So there has to be some kind of return to commonality. Out of that commonality, then we have the new society, the new humanity. And I think this is going to happen in the 2020s. First, we're going to go through a few years of additional chaos and disruption. And then after that, there will be the emergence of these new designs of communities, kind of like the Big Gay Family social, pro uh, social Program and many others. Humanity will reinvent itself. We definitely will. It's just a question of how quickly we're going to all go through that, that funnel of sh common struggle and then at the end to see whether we're going to come out in unity or whether we come, we're going to come out in division. And I think uh, there is a way to facilitate that process inside of private communities where that struggle always results in greater sense of commonality, greater sense of unity, and not susceptible to corruption, not susceptible to invasion or subversion by ideas that continually disempower people and make them weaker and weaker. Because the phoniness, when you think about it, that phoniness is intentional. That phoniness is has been intentionally institutionalized and normalized all across the world to create a sense of disassociation from the real world. That's why I refer to philosophy often in videos because philosophy and these laws of, of metaphysics, they bring you back into reality. They, they pierce through that phoniness, that membrane of disassociation, and they help you see what's really, what is really real and what is phony. And then for most people, we need the courage to make the decisions to break through the phoniness. Oftentimes, phoniness is pleasurable. Phoniness uh, can also be very uh, um, protective in terms of not having to witness all the negativity. Sometimes we enter into states that are phony because we don't want to witness all the reality and all the tragedy and all the trauma all the betrayals, all the manipulations, all the ways that people hurt each other, all the ways that we go through life and have to rebuild friendships and relationships, heavy stuff. Not a lot of people can handle this uh, successfully, especially across many years. So sometimes we enter into these phony states as a way to protect ourselves from having to deal with the trauma of all this abuse, the shame, the narcissism, the, the continuous um, difficulties with relatedness, with relationships, desiring love, desiring emotional connections, desiring physical contact, and then continuously being deprived emotionally, sexually, being deprived from belonging. And so in that world, we enter into very strange states of mind. And these states of mind are disassociative. They take us away from reality. And they make relationships difficult because relationships are, in essence, a return to reality. A relationship is, is the robbing against the, the reality because now we have two people 
that are confronted with having to witness each other. So there is a return to reality. And that's why relationships are so difficult for most people, because they don't want to leave their disassociation. They don't want to leave their phoniness. They want to remain in their phoniness because it has become their life, their world. And men love living in worlds of fantasy. So for men, it's very instinctive to be in a closet all the time. If it's not the gay closet, which is pretending to be straight, if you're gay, you know, that's one closet. But there are many, many other closets of pretending that we are not emotionally active and then suppressing our emotions. That's a big closet a lot of men are in. Many men are in closets of shame and being victims of narcissistic abuse without even knowing that they carry shame, without even knowing that they are experiencing trauma from years of narcissistic abuse, whether from parents, lovers, or from the community. So when we look at 2021, I'm inviting everybody to break through all the phoniness, to break through all of the disassociation, to be okay feeling uncomfortable in the real reality, to be able to discern truth or falsehood, what's good, what's bad, to be able to know who to trust and who to distrust, to be able to know who to join and who to leave. These ideas and distinctions will make you stronger, will empower your masculinity, will also help you contain your identity in a very powerful way. Understanding philosophy is not something that everybody talks about. And this is why people are so disempowered. When you think about you as a person and how you get empowered, you get empowered first by having a solid foundation, and that's all philosophy, then having a solid psychology, and that's the content of your mind, the way that you feel and think about yourself, and then your identity, and then your gender, and then the words that you choose to describe yourself, the way that you talk about yourself, your general sense of self-concept, your general sense of ability, how you see yourself interacting with the world. All of this is at stake here. And the phony world out there wants to take it all away from you. And as you enter into 2021, I promise you victory when you free yourself from that phony world and when you enter into the real world of ideas that come from hundreds and hundreds of years of discovery and discernment and have been proven by thousands of years of life to be effective. And these ideas are what we want to return to. And these ideas are what will empower you to get in control of your life again, especially as a gay man, because the LGBT community violates all of those rules, the law of identity, the law of consciousness, and the law of um, existence. So empower yourself with this information and break through the other side in your life. Go to the next level. Find pleasure in studying philosophy. Find pleasure in studying psychology. Even though you're not a psychologist, who knows? Maybe you will be. Maybe you will be a coach. Maybe you will be a community builder. Maybe one day you will take a stand and to take that stand, you will need to have some understanding of the world. And so no matter how you look at this, studying of philosophy, studying of psychology, study of psychology is the future. This crazy world, after it falls apart, will have to be rebuilt. Somebody will have to rebuild all this mess. Who's going to do it? Well, someone will have to do it. I volunteer to do it. I hope you volunteer to be part of it. And this is, my friends, the biggest adventure that awaits all of us. The rebuilding of this world is this adventure that will bring us together. The question is, how fast do we come together? The question is, what ideas will bring us together? And the question is, how all of us awaken to all the phoniness and have discernment that then brings everybody together to agree that yes, this is the truth, and yes, this is the falsehood. And this is, my friends, how the world will heal and the rest will be history. We're going to look back at this time as the most crazy time in the whole 
history of humanity and we will look back at okay we survived it we survived it because we came together we saw what's phony we saw what's real we then empowered ourselves with the tools to never make this mistake again this time around we can create artificial intelligence we can embed these new rules in it to prevent corruption to prevent all the propaganda to prevent all the manipulation to prevent all the intentional disassociation the shaming the narcissistic abuse from either the government from our families our communities or our lovers all of this can be algorithmically embedded inside of a social ai i think this is ultimately the the future not too far away i'm already working on these ideas for the big family social program so as you hear there is hope there is goodness that is possible, but we need to open our eyes and we need to be humans again. And with that, the solutions appear, we act, we take action, we fix the world and we come together again. So with this, I wanted again to wish you Merry Christmas, Happy New Year 2021. I wish all of you the best. I'm here for you. I took a little break in terms of creating videos but I still created an extraordinary amount of videos and all of that will be published soon. So I was very productive behind the scenes. In fact, I was working on huge ideas and I needed some quiet time, some meditative time to keep my mind sharp. And soon you're gonna see those videos coming up. Uh, more than 20 videos, great ideas about the future, ideas that are huge, ideas that are very gay, uh, ascension-based, they take the understanding of the gay identity to the next level. I think you're going to love them. This is the next frontier for the gay world. And I'm super excited to share all of these with uh, all of these videos with you. And I can't wait to get your feedback. And ultimately, I can't wait to have you come and join us here in the Big Gay Family, because this is the center of this revolution. This is the center of these new ideas. We are leading the gay world forward. If you want to be part of this revolution, if you want to be part of this new frontier, you got to join us because otherwise you're going to miss out on this, this newness that's coming through us here in the Big Gay Family social program. So with this, thank you for watching. Please come back to my channel and the website often. I'll be publishing a lot new videos coming up in a couple of days. So please check back to see all the new ideas that I've been working on this summer. Okay, my friends, thank you very much for watching. Until we talk in the next video, as always, love for love, honor for honor. I will fight for you when you fight for me. And that's our social contract. Okay, my friends, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you in the next video.